Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics. Today we're going to do a video that I, I probably should have done a long time ago. Um, I've done tons of setup videos and we, we talk about mixing and all those kind of things, but what I'm going to talk about today is how to make your aircraft fly like you want it to. In other words, most of the time if the plane isn't behaving while it's in the air, it's all in setup and programming. Um, there's very few planes that are just so crappy that it won't do anything well. Um, yeah, there are some that don't uh, uh, 3D very well, but if you take the 3D element out of it, as far as just straight line flying, uh, my contention is you can get just about anything to fly beautifully. Today we're going to do it with three different, it's, the video might be in three parts, but we're going to show you how to get a 3D plane to fly like it, you want it to. I've got my Katana 60 here. And um, uh, of course, I've worked very hard to make this fly just like I wanted to. Um, this is a, a pattern ship. Okay, I love flying pattern, and, and um, needless to say, I've had this one for a while, and it took me maybe 25 to 30 flights to get this flying exactly like I wanted to. Um, this is a, a, an EDF made by uh, FMS, it's a really, really good aircraft. And um, at this point, I only have a few flights on it, but I'm really liking the way it flies and I'm getting it very close to flying exactly the way I want it to, to do everything I want it to do. Um, all three of these are handled a little bit differently. As always, we're gonna do the one nearest, nearest to my heart, and that's 3D. We're gonna take up the katana and we're gonna discuss the things that you are going to need uh, to do to be able to make it fly the way you want it to. All right. Um, before we go up, we have to think about, uh, first of all, we have to think about exactly how you want this to fly. This has to be uh, predetermined before you start flying it. Um, so uh, first thing you need to do is establish your goals. My goal for this 3D plane is for it to be able to uh, make sure that it flies very straight lines. So have a setup involved that when I'm trying to fly straight lines, it flies very straight. Um, then I also need to make sure that I have a, a, a very radical mode for tumbling and everything like that, uh, because I do want this thing to tumble like crazy. I want it to have uh, all the capabilities that I can get out of it. And then of course, when it starts to slow down and get low and slow, I have to consider how it's gonna behave in a hover, and how it's gonna behave in Harrier rolls, okay? So those are my goals for the setup. And generally, when I'm doing it, I'll do one flight for one part, one flight for the other, and one flight for the other, and make sure I get them all set up. And normally they're on different rates when it comes to a 3D plane. Okay, we have several things that can be altered to make sure it flies the way you want it to, and it feels the way you want it to. Um, my contention is you can pretty much get it to feel any way you want it to feel. So the first thing that we have to work with is CG. If you're going to fly more straight line and high energy maneuvers, you might want the CG to drift a little bit forward because it encourages that type of thing. Um, uh, the, the second thing is um, uh, mixing. Uh, depending on how you want it to fly, uh, there might be mixes that you might uh, want to put in it that uh, another guy might not. Uh, mixing, for instance, low pass. You want to do a really, really fast low pass. Well, if you get low and hit full throttle with this thing, it's going to want to balloon up. So you have to put a mix in it that when you hit full throttle, it stays straight. So you have to put a little down elevator. That'll get it to fly the way you want. So um, uh, if you're going to do an inverted high speed pass, which is not the thing that have most people do with the 3D planes, but if you want to, you're going to have to put a little mix in to keep it from inverted from flying up. Um, the other thing you have to, to uh, in your arsenal for, for making it fly the way you want to is rates and expo. So um, these are the things that really affect the flight of a 3D plane the most. Um, how it feels when you start to roll. And I will try to explain my process in a minute. I'm going to start with the most difficult one. 
uh, you know, I have the CG set exactly where I like it. And uh, basically, if most of what you're going to do is going to be low and slow, setting the CG for me, I like the CG right on the money. Uh, when you make it a little tail heavy, it tends to get a little oversensitive and in some attitudes doesn't perform as well. So I like it right on. But if really all you're going to do is hover, it's very possible that with the right rates, you can go a little tail heavy and you, you might like it. Okay? So the first thing that I need to make sure is that as I'm standing the airplane up, okay, as I'm coming down and I'm going to try to, to stand it up, that means I want to smoothly transition, right? Watch the tail. It's not enough to use stick very much and it starts. You see how nice and smooth that is? So that's how I have it right on the money. So as you're testing this, make sure as you're standing up, you are pulling enough elevator that it's not real real quick and, and, and getting a little out of control and, and jerky. See, a little too much uh, elevator too quick and not enough expo will prevent you from uh, having very smooth linear control. And for me, I want it to fly the way I want it. I want smooth linear control when I'm standing it up. You see how it's nice and smooth I can stand it? Very linear. Um, so that's one of the first big things in uh, uh, this 3D part that says, you know, I want to make sure that the elevator is tuned properly. And in order to make it fly like I want it to, when I'm transitioning from, let's say I'm, okay, I'm going to be down into a hover, and then I want to immediately go fast. I don't want to have to switch rates because it's inconvenient, okay? So, I want to have enough expo that, here I go, and look, I can still fly very smooth. Everything on the aircraft is very smooth. Look, this is all in high rates. That is full speed. All the bumping around is just from the wind. So I put enough expo in this aircraft so that around the center, it's very, very similar to everything else. But see how nice and smooth I can fly it? Smooth rolling, smooth everything. Look, that's completely on high rates at full speed. So that's important to me. And if I want it to fly that way, I have to adjust my expo. So uh, get the airplane off the ground. I'm going to land it here just so I can talk. And uh, also, you know, if you notice in all my videos when I'm landing my 3D planes, they land kind of smooth. And that's because I set the expo in such a way that I can fly flat out and still have all my control in the center of the stick and it's never touchy. That's because I have enough expo. This expo on this one is a little over 60, I think it's like 64%. So that makes it fly really nice at the lower levels. But when it comes time to hover, I can put it up. So I found exactly the right rate for the elevator to make sure it does what I want it to do. Um, it's very obvious, very quick. And this applies to straight line flying and everything else. Um, and that will be the ailerons to make sure at the center they're nice and slow. You saw that slow roll where I was able to roll nice and slow on full speed. That just meant at the center of the stick, I didn't have to move it very much, and I had enough expo to make sure that the ailerons were nice and slow. And I didn't have to switch rates. I can fly my whole routine on it for the most part. The only thing that's difficult is uh, you know, quick snapping and things like that. I have to have a different rate. So, and switch. So now the, the other thing is going to be the rudder. Um, to me, the rudder is probably the most critical for flying to the low flow. And I'll tell you why. The reason the rudder is so critical is when you get it up into a, a hover, it's very easy to, over, uh, to overcompensate on the rudder. Um, especially during rolling harriers. If my rudder isn't set up properly, My expo is perfect. I'll be able to keep the nose just right. Remember, this one's already set up and it's set up very, very well. Okay, you see the nose staying the same? And that's because I have my stick set to this. Let me land quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. For my rolling Harrier, it's a little uncomfortable for the rudder to be pegged on both sides. Okay? On my 3D rates, 
I toned down the Expo on the rudder a little bit because it's more comfortable to, to go back and forth like this. I get a little more authority kicking in a little early. So when the authority kicks in early, that means I don't have to jam it all the way to the other side. And of course, when you have a lot of Expo, um, it, it gets sudden towards the end. And that of course can create a situation where they look weird. And if you've ever seen a, a rolling Harrier where, where someone it's, it's just kind of jerking around, pretty much either they have too much Expo or they're not using enough rudder and then jamming the rudder all at once. Yeah. Well, the rudder's the most furthest point away from the CG, so it's got the longest arm, so it's a lot more sensitive than the others, exactly. obviously. So. Exactly. So you have to be very careful with the rudder to make sure you have, you know, enough expo so it's not twitchy, but um, uh, little enough to make sure it kicks in early enough. You know, because you don't want it to, you don't want the stick to be all the way over here before the rudder really kicks to to help you with the high alpha. Um, and then of course, uh, let me go up here again. Then of course there's another danger with uh, uh, setting the rudder in a way that doesn't uh, uh, suit the rolling area and suit your flying is, okay, the difference between, uh, as you start a rolling area, right? So I wanna go straight down the runway, okay? Where I wanna turn. See the turn? More often than not, the plane will turn if your rudder kicks in too early. Let me explain a little and, and watch it. Okay. If I kick the rudder a little bit early, you see the you see the nose start to turn? See? So I'm all now I'm doing a circle. Okay, and that's from me adding a little extra rudder a little early. So if I don't have enough expo, the rudder will the rudder will just go to the to the correct side just a little early. So like if I'm doing a, a, a single rolling surf, I start with rudder. I kick it in early. So you see it's starting to come around before I ever even roll the, the uh, ailerons. So if I add the rudder now, you see it's starting to turn. So if you don't have enough expo, it be very hard for you to do a rolling harrier like, like this to just you see now I'm flying straight because it's mine is set up just right so I can fly in a straight line. But if it wasn't set up right, and I didn't have enough expo on the rudder, as soon as I start doing a rolling harrier, I either have to really wait on it, which gets uncomfortable, or the the uh, the aircraft is gonna turn you know on it to the inside. As far as the ailerons are concerned, I mean, you should be able to uh, to just roll slowly, very easily. I really don't uh, advise in any way, shape, or form uh, to have you know fast ailerons close to the beginning of the stick. Nothing, absolutely nothing, will make you look more amateurish than the ailerons being. you can do is take it up high and just try and do a slow roll on your high rate. And that wasn't bad for you know a high rate flying about half throttle. Um, ailerons being switchy can make the plane look very ugly. Now there is a matter of the other things I talked about which is mixing to make it fly the way you want it to. You know obviously this plane has been mixed out for nice I don't want to go into each individual thing too thoroughly on this video. I have videos on mixing. But this plane obviously is mixed to the point where if I want to do an ice bench, it's going to fly just the way I want it to. And it's going to hold that knife bench just like this, even with it being so heavy. It's going to hold the knife bench perfectly. And um, I don't have to worry about it pulling towards me. I don't have to worry about uh, anything like that. I did that a little downwind. The, the plane will start to rise a little bit if I'm full throttle. My I only suggest that. I'm uh, uh, maneuvers 
just like this, which is going to be quick snaps. You have to have a rate that will work. Okay. Now, as you notice, this is going to fly very straight lines because I toned down all the surfaces. My rates are way lower than my uh, uh, the rates are way lower than my 3D rates. But I can very quickly roll pretty fast and do some really nice, uh, you know, snapping maneuvers that look fantastic. And I can fly very fast and still keep the plane very smooth through all of it. And then of course, if you love doing things like uh, uh, for yourself, like super smooth, long, slow rolls and things like that, and you want the plane to be very, very smooth, and those ailerons to be super, super, super slow to it, um, for me, I had that on a low rate where I toned down the rudder and the ailerons as well. And the trick is to really fly through each maneuver, watch each one one at a time, and set the rates exactly like you want it. And don't stop until the plane feels exactly the way you want it to. Um, and I hate to say this about you know the people watching this, but most people get very lazy and they just, well, it's good enough. But if you have the attitude, good enough is good enough, you'll never have a plane that just, just does everything perfectly. And I can assure you, I don't stop until my planes are flying that way. That way, everything I'm doing, I can have great confidence in. I set my long, slow, super smooth uh, uh, IMAC maneuvers rate, I set my snap rate, and I set my uh, 3D rate. And occasionally, my rolling harriers are a little too fast, I have to set another rate uh, just for those to really adjust the rudder expo and the aileron to be exactly like I want. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, we're going to do pattern and EDFs.